So in today's webinar, we are going to be talking about module two, which is the industry introduction. And joining us to do that today are Oliver Shea, who is the director of Omnimedia and planning at Boots. And we also have Pete Markey, who is the chief marketing officer at Boots. So I'm going to hand it over to you both, as I know you have a presentation to show us. Um, and then I'll come back for a Q&A at the end. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, Ollie's just going to get that on the screen now. So first of all, thank you all for uh, coming along today. It's a real privilege to come and share a bit with you today. Um, the, what we're going to do is, first of all, I'm going to chat a bit about Boots, and then Ollie's going to share a bit about his background. I'm going to share a bit about mine, and then together we're going to answer some of the questions you've set us, and then obviously very happy to open the floor to more questions. So, Ollie, let's start with a bit about Boots. So, you may know uh, a fair amount about Boots, um, but there may be some bits you don't know. So, we are 170 years old. Um, we've got a ton of different things we do. You, know, you may know us for a pharmacy, you may know us for beauty, but we also have a hearing care business, opticians business, a thriving business in Ireland. Um, I've had some advantage card holders on this call today. We've got over 15 million of you, uh, and we're going to be celebrating 25 years of that uh, award-winning loyalty scheme next year. Um, lots of boot stores around. I've been in the business um, quite recently, it's from quite recently, I joined 10 months ago. And uh, and my uh, antenna is always tuned into where a boot store is. It's amazing how many there are and how close they are. You can literally get to one within within 10 minutes. We're also a thriving digital retailer. Our sales are up over 100% since the pandemic started. And we've really grown our sales through digital and the app. So we're not just about a physical store, we're about so much more. The marketing team is mainly based in Nottingham. Although today I'm in our, our, our satellite office in London and we either work from Nottingham or, or from home uh, or from our London office or from one of our agencies in London. Uh, 120 people in the team. So it's, it's a strong team. Um, we've done a lot of uh, quite exciting work recently. We're gearing up for Christmas at the moment, but we ran a campaign through the summer called Feel Good is New. And that was named the most effective out of the month in June by Marketing Week. Um, based on how it scored for persuasion and responsiveness. So we're really delighted with that. We've seen some great results from our recent activity over the last um, six to nine months that Ollie and I are particularly proud of. Um, we were asked about how the team's structured and happy to talk more around, therefore, where opportunities lie. But our broad structures have a marketing comms team who deliver the work in store, you know, TV, social media, uh, video on demand, radio, all the bits you know us for. I uh, have a loyalty team that deal with uh, the, the advantage card and what we do each day. The media strategy and planning team, which is uh, Ollie's team that I'll let Ollie bring to life in, in a moment. Customer development, which is about our uh, how we um, shape our customer experience and what technology we use to do that. An insight and research function. And we have an internal creative studio. So we have a 50 plus strong creative studio where we don't just use big agencies. We have people doing creative in the building with us in Nottingham. Uh, and WPP, who I referenced there, are one of the world's leading big ad agencies and we work with them and they do all of our big creative idea work including Christmas that's launching soon. And as you can see on the bottom, Ollie and I are relatively just about, we can just about claim to be new guys, just about still. Um, but I don't know what Ollie thinks, but I've, we learn every day. It's an amazing business and every day I'm learning new things about the business and how we operate. So really pleased to be here, but wanted to share a bit of context around Boots and what Ollie and I are going to come and talk about. But I'm going to hand to Ollie now, who's going to share first of all about his background and how he got into marketing. Over to you, Ollie. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Pete. And uh, lovely to meet you all uh, this afternoon. Uh, as Pete said, yeah, very much the newbies to uh, Boots. Um, so for me, it's just been five months that I've been here at Boots. Um, and my role is Omni Media Director. So I kind of have two hats, as Pete was saying. I look after the consumer media side of the business. Um, so working on all of our activity at the moment for things like Christmas. So how we're putting together all of our plans for that with my team. Uh, and then on the other side of my role is I am responsible for Boots Media Group, uh, which is our supplier uh, driven business, which is where we look at how we can leverage our own kind of media channels within Boots, such as our in-store channel, our on-site um, Boots.com channel. Uh, and now we're developing other channels off-site um, that we'll be able to obviously leverage with uh, some of our supplier base. So that's my role now. But my career, um, I've kind of uh has been over kind of the last 20 years I've, i'm born as you can hear and raised in the uk um and i've lived uh, both in the uk and also abroad uh over the last kind of 20 years of my career i'm just going to share with you guys a little bit of where how my career has taken me uh, and some of the things i've worked on so really i've worked across a real range of kind of large companies so my career started in retail in sainsbury's um and i started on the graduate program there uh, where i worked in the stores group in the retail group for about three and a half years there really fantastic i think it was some great grounding for me to really understand that kind of core retail business and i think 
had a passion and love for retail always kind of began. Um, but um, I'm also, I'll be very open, you're quite a geeky, techie guy. Um, and so the opportunity kind of came up um, at the head office at Sainsbury's to kind of move in. It was just about the kind of genesis of the kind of e-commerce um, for them. So I had the chance to kind of move over and start working in the kind of e-commerce business there. Started working on things like um, that what was the original Sainsbury's to you, which is now their uh, home delivery service. Uh, worked on that for a number of years and could that kind of I got bitten with the bug then, uh, both on e-com, but also I started to get really into the marketing space and a lot of digital marketing. Really enjoyed it, loved it, and I think it kind of gave me the drive to look at what opportunities I could have in my career. An opportunity came up to move to Nestle, um, so I had the opportunity to go and work for Nestle for about three and a half years in the UK as the head of digital. Um, really great, got to work on a great range of brands there from Nespresso to Nescafe, um, from everything from kind of cat and dog food all the way through to sweets um, and really work with them in its kind of genesis when we had things like Facebook were beginning to come live and have a chance to kind of work on some great brands and really learn from that. Um, but I think the opportunity that spurred me was, well, what, other, what else is out there? What other brands are out there that I could work with? And I've always been a massive fan of Guinness, a big rugby fan. Um, and so an opportunity came up to move to Diageo um, to run their kind of media planning and uh, buying department there in the UK. So I took that opportunity. Guinness was one of the brands I got to work on. Uh, and I had a great chance to work on great brands. Diageo has a great heritage of being able to a great, have a great uh, way of building brands. And the, the kind of learnings I got there were quite brilliant. Um, so I spent five great years there, both in the, the UK and then in Europe. Um, really, really enjoyed it. Gave me a great bedrock. Um, but I wanted to get back into commerce. I wanted to feel a bit more connected to the delivery. Um, and also I wanted to live outside the UK. So I moved from uh, London over to Amsterdam uh, to work as booking at booking.com, a real, at the time, quite startup of, uh, in its genesis. Um, I did five great years there building the media team there and the media department. Um, really, really enjoyed it. I think it gave me all the international experience that exposed me to kind of a global role, but also gave me some challenges of working and living in another country. Uh, and I got to work across a range of different places. So um, I worked on European, Europe, uh, the US, Latin, and also gave me the chance to move over to Asia. Five great years there, but was looking also for a new challenge. And about 18 months ago, I took the opportunity to move uh, over to Denmark, where I worked for Echo um, for about uh, just over 15 months. Really enjoyed it. It was great. I got to be the growth uh, and media director there. Um, but I felt the, the kind of pull of coming back to the UK. And so uh, here I am now. Um, after seven years away, moving back to kind of uh, be at Boots, amazing opportunity to work for a brand with real heritage uh, and with the chance to work with Pete. Uh, and also, you know, we know there's an exciting agenda ahead for us. So that was a lot of draws for me. So my career has been quite varied across the board. Um, lots that I've learned from it, um, but it just kind of gave me the chance, I suppose, to look at different areas and kind of move into it. I've always worked in media. I love media as a, as a kind of a discipline. I think as I've grown, I really like the opportunity to kind of meld those kind of long term brand building approaches. So how do you take kind of big TV advertising and marry it really with kind of pure performance and things like PPC programmatic? And I think as the kind of media landscapes have evolved, particularly over the last period of time, um, it just gives that constant evolution that's challenging that always means there's something new to learn, um, which I really enjoy. Um, and then I think the other thing for me is I really always see media as a kind of growth driver for a business. And that for me is something that's always driven me as an exciting part, which is, you know, media is not an investment. It's an opportunity to drive uh, revenue and profitability for a company. And that's something I'm really excited about doing. Um, and having the chance to do that at Boots is really something that's been a super exciting part for me. So that's uh, just a little bit about me. I know we'll talk a bit more later and please do ask any questions um, about it. But uh I'll hand over to Pete. Brilliant. Thanks, Ollie. Great introduction. Ollie is a really key member of my team. So it's brilliant to be able to do this with, with Ollie. And um, I'm going to share a little bit about how I got into marketing. And um, so a little bit first about me is I, I've lived all around the country. Sadly, I haven't got as many air miles as Ollie, um, which I'm quite jealous about. Um, I've mainly lived in the UK. So um, from High Wycombe to I was a Geordie for a while. So as a, as a kid, I sounded like a, a, a poor version of Anton Deck. I used to be a big fan of Newcastle United Football Club growing up. Um, but my dad's job meant we moved from Newcastle to Bristol. Uh, and then from there, I went to university in Southampton. I got married and lived in Basingstoke and now live in East Surrey uh, towards Horsham direction. 
And so um, it's given me a chance to see all sides of the UK and live in some wonderful places and meet some amazing people. Um, but it also means my accent is completely nondescript. So when people meet me, I have no idea where I'm from. Uh, but I do reassure you that years ago, I did have a very, very broad Geordie accent. But the years in Bristol sort of took that away from me. And um, uh, But I haven't gone full Bristolian either. But it's, um, it's anyway, it's been a roller coaster ride. Um, when I went to university, I... I'd love it. Sometimes people ask me, well, what, what, you know, what was your big career plan? How did you get into marketing? And um, when I went to university, I, I really wanted to get into journalism. So I did, first of all, an, an HND and then upgraded that into a degree in, at Southampton. And, um, and I wanted to leave to either become a, jur- a journalist or work in public relations. Um, and I actually, um, um, uh, I'll, go, I'll tell the full story. I actually turned down uh, the chance to take on a uh, a graduate job in public relations to stay in Southampton to be with my then girlfriend, who's now my wife, who I've been married to for, for 24 years. So um, I made the right decision there. And, and um, but turned my back on a career in PR and, and ended up working, first of all, in British Gas. So I, I needed money. So I basically got, got this degree, left with a 2 1 in corporate communication. It'd been everything from advertising, PR, media, video production. We ran a radio station. And just to pay the bills, I, I end up working British Gas, answering the phones in customer service. And from there, I got to know the business in the Southampton office. I got to work in the internal comms team. I led a sales team and then applied for a job in the head office in marketing. So I thought, you know what? I've done marketing. I did this in my degree. I sort of know what I'm doing. And so I got a job uh, working on analyzing the performance of British Gas's big brand campaigns. Now, this is going to make me sound incredibly old, and I apologize for this, but there was a day many moons ago when you could only ever buy your gas from British Gas. You could only buy it from British Gas. Um, and so I was at, at, in British Gas at the point where the whole energy market opened up. You could buy your gas from uh, a range of companies, buy electricity from a range of companies. That back in the late 90s was like unheard of. It was like revolutionary. So I was in British Gas when the brand really mattered because we went from having you know, you know, 30, 40 million customers to, to sort of having a lot less quite quickly. So you were constantly looking for how could you retain and hold on to customers. Really exciting business to be in. And I worked in a range of roles in marketing from brand then to uh, direct marketing. And the business Centrica, who still owned British Gas, went on a really exciting strategy program where they bought the AA to get into not just people's homes, but into people's cars as well. They bought OneTel, an Australian business that was a telecoms company that did again, I'm showing my age here, fixed line telecoms where you, you'd have a call package where before mobiles exploded you you get you get a, a a phone at home people would ring you up on it and that was really important for us and i but i did sell mobile in the early days of mobile 4.99 a month nokia handsets that was me and unlimited broadband um and so i got to work in the aa first of all uh, and then in one cell working again on marketing programs Really interesting businesses, particularly OneTel, because we didn't have a big marketing budget. But similar to what Ollie was describing, it's all about response, getting people. We had, we had at that time, it's the early 2000s, we had 40% of our customers doing online servicing, which 20 years ago is phenomenal to think about. But it was an amazing business where it was all about how you performed in digital, how you performed in response. We even ran responsive press ads. You, you were literally living the business day by day on performance. Love that business. That business actually got sold. So a company called Talk Talk that you probably still see advertised. They Talk Talk bought one tell. Uh, they literally came in overnight and painted over our logo with their logo, uh, sacked our agencies, and I had to make my entire team redundant. Um, and they said, well, actually, we quite like you. We'd like to hold on to you. And I decided that I'd done telecoms. I really didn't want to do it anymore. And I had the chance to go and work for a big insurance company called More Than that's part of Royal and Sun Alliance and moved to Horsham. Uh, and then with that, I was able to do more response, more brand activity. I ran the digital team as well, the e-commerce team, and grew that business significantly by investing in the brand and response channels. Um, I then got a chance to do a global role. So I went from more than to work for Royal Alliance globally. So I got to sit on the board of the Russian business. I worked in Scandinavia, uh, Ireland, um, uh, ca- yeah, Canada, uh, Latin America. I went to Chile and Argentina quite a lot. It was really interesting working as a marketing consultant within a business, fixing difficult, knotty marketing and brand problems. And what's particularly exciting is working in businesses that were so different from the UK. The markets are just so, it's a very obvious point, and you will be learning this through the work you do with CIM, but markets can be so, so completely different. You know, the product might be the same, but the way it's sold. So a great example is Russia, where you go over there and you think, golly, these guys should be doing loads of targeted marketing, you know, emails, you know, even direct mail still writing to people. Yet, there's no way you can buy people's postal addresses. You can't get postal addresses in, in, in Russia. 
it's sort of unheard of. So again, we had to completely rethink our approach to marketing. From there, I got to run marketing at the post office for a couple of years. Amazing business, well-established, a business you'll know because it's on the high street everywhere. And I got to go in and reinvigorate the brand, change the customer experience, digitalize it a lot more, and do the first Christmas campaign we'd done for five or six years that, that performed really well. And my most recent roles, I went back, I got lured back into insurance. I worked in, in a digital garage in Aviva where they were trying to disrupt, create a business model to disrupt uh, how they did insurance, fast turnarounds with data and marketing tech with Adobe, similar to what Ollie described about performance marketing and media. And I took all of that into running marketing at TSB for the last three and a half years and then into Boots uh, nine months ago, which is an amazing business that we'll share more about. And I've been lucky enough to work on some really big campaigns and, and probably too many to mention here. Um, but I've, I've loved working on big brand projects, but also the sort of hands-on work that Ollie described is seeing how your marketing activity performs every day. That's the brilliance. When I first started in marketing, the dream was how do you get the right product, the right service, the right message in front of someone at the right time? So take Boots, you know, if someone's got a cold or headache, how do I make sure I'm the first place they think about? And actually with all the technology and the data we've got now, the sorts of work that Ollie and I can now do is that personal where we really can be more relevant and show up in, whether it's through social media or even our email program or on our app in a way that's hyper, hyper personal and relevant. And that's super exciting. So that, that energizes me as much as some of the big stuff we're able to do. Um, as well as all the exciting work we're doing in Boots, including a fantastic Christmas campaign we've got um, starring Jenna Coleman, who's been in the likes of Doctor Who, Serpent and Victoria, who's brilliant to work with. That launches very shortly. Um, in my last role at, at TSB, I relaunched the, the uh, TSB banking brand with a campaign featuring David Schwimmer from Friends, which was another great campaign to work on. I promise I don't always work with celebrities. I've done as many campaigns without them, but for, for particularly for TSB, it really mattered to show up in quite an unexpected way and having... David Schwimmer and his first ever ad campaign was brilliant. And also the content we created, the targeting of the content was brilliant. Again, right customer at the right time with our messaging. Um, as well as, as the day job, I think one of the things that's really important for me as a marketing leader is to, is to do more in the business. So Ollie and I are able to do so much through what we do in the day job. And we're able, both of us do a lot more to, to extend what we do. And so just a couple examples of what I've been working on recently. I'm the exec sponsor for something called Marketing for Change, which is all about how uh, we show up in the most inclusive way, the people we pick to feature in our advertising, the language we use, the products we feature, and that's globally uh, within not just Boots, but Walgreens and Boots Alliance that owns us. And then also uh, I'm the exec sponsor for the Boots LGBT plus Pride Network, which gives me a chance to work with some amazing people in how we show up uh, throughout the year uh, to truly celebrate the LGBT plus community. And I think... For me, an important part of my job is being a really positive change agent to make a difference with the great work we do as a marketing team, but also within the wider business as a whole. Um, so hopefully that's a helpful history on me and Ollie. Uh, and then Ollie and I, we're just going to quickly sort of tag team on answering some of your questions, if that's all right. We flick to the next one, Ollie. Um, I'm just going to ask our fantastic host um, how much longer you want us to talk for, because Ollie and I could merrily chat through these questions. Very for much so, yeah. But forever and a day. So how much longer would you like Ollie and I to cover before we open up for questions? I, hello. Um, we hello. can start with some questions now, if you like, unless there's anything else that you feel is really important that you wanted to go over. Well, why don't we, why don't we open for questions? I mean, the, yeah. if, if, yes. we, if we don't get any questions, we can cover the ones here. But I'd love to hear from people on, on this call. We've already yeah. had lots come through. Um, Fantastic. So that's probably Fantastic. a good idea so that we can get through Brilliant. lots of them. Shall we, shall we, um, Ollie, should we stop screen sharing for the minute? That's yeah, probably perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's great. great. Thank you. There Thanks, you everyone. Well, thank you both so much for that. Um, your careers have been incredible so far. Um, so I'm sure it's very inspiring for people watching and I'm sure they do have even more questions that I can see. Um, the first question we've had is, what do you think is the best route into marketing? Would you say university or an apprenticeship? Holly, do you want to take that one first? And I'm happy yeah. to give a perspective, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think... Uh... I think for me, it's, I mean, my career was quite varied in marketing because actually I, I did my degree in history uh, and then my, uh, I did my master in politics. So it's completely unrelated to anything I probably do today. Um, so I think from my perspective, uh, I think nowadays with the raft of opportunities that there are in marketing, I think really um, from, a, from my perspective, doing university degree that is something that you're really passionate about and want to do during the period and gives you great learnings, I think sets you up really well for then 
whatever your career wants to be after that. So I would say um, from my side, you know, do the thing that you want to do from a university perspective, look at the opportunities and how that links to maybe what you might want to do in marketing in the future. But there's so many um, like opportunities now to get into it, into marketing, I think, and so many different avenues that you can begin with that you can cross over. So, you know, from my side, started probably really digitally driven, moved more into brand building, then move, you know, across. So I would say, you know, do what you love at university, enjoy the time. And then from there, look at where you can link your career from there. But uh, there are lots of internships and other opportunities that I've worked with other partners in other parts of the world with, which also can open up opportunities maybe when you're not studying as well. And, and then build on that, I just, I, yeah, I, I think Ollie's spot on. I mean, I, I just chase every opportunity. I think there are some really interesting apprenticeship programs opening up. I mean, the likes of the School of Marketing, the Marketing Academy Foundation, there are a number of ways into marketing now through some of the really great apprenticeship schemes, as well as some companies running those as well. Uh, and it's not, it's not something we're, um, I think, doing enough of for Boots at the moment. So Ollie and I are working with our HR business partner on, on uh, looking at apprenticeship schemes within, within uh, getting people into Boots. And no, we haven't landed the plan yet, but it, we're actively seeking one. Uh, and we'll get there very quickly, hopefully, in the next couple of months. Um, I think a degree, it's like, I mean, I, I did an MBA years ago, and I think a degree is also brilliant. If you're passionate about a subject and it opens mm. your eyes to stuff, and part of the, for me, the learning experience is the people you meet and the, the, the journey you go on in it. So um, I think you know, if you're passionate about something, go chase after it, go and do a degree and be brilliant at it. Um, I think a lot of it getting into marketing is about, um, it's about you know tenacity, it's about personality, it's about being driven, about being passionate about something. And and getting out there and getting the right level of experience. So I, I, my view would be I'd, I'd push every door down. If you haven't got a degree, don't let it be a barrier. If you're passionate about doing one, go and do one, though. Um, and it's not going to hurt you, but I, I just I don't think it's the be all and end all now. I think it's more about the drive and determination. But as Ollie says, if there's something you want to do and you want the experience as well in life and the amazing group of people you're going to meet, um, I can't argue with it. I met my wife that way, so it's all good, okay? You, you meet amazing people, and it's quite life-changing. Chase after that as well. Hmm. would you say there's lots of opportunities say for someone who doesn't want to go to university or you know they just know straight away they want to do marketing but they're not bothered about university would you say there's enough option out there and you know they won't be disadvantaged to someone who has a degree i i would so my hope is not i mean as ollie and i are saying we're seeing more schemes emerge for apprenticeships yeah the best thing to do is get yourself get onto linkedin and I, I think LinkedIn is brilliant because LinkedIn obviously wasn't there in the early days of my career in Ollie's. And it's really exploded. Actually, the, the level of searching you can now do for both apprenticeships and marketing roles, and mar even an entry-level marketing assistant, are brilliant on LinkedIn. So I encourage anyone to look quite regularly at LinkedIn and go, what's out there? What are people looking for? What criteria? What level of experience are people looking for? And then how do you go about getting that? And how can you start applying and getting into those roles? So it's about curiosity. Be, be tenacious. Don't get despondent if you don't you get in the first hurdle. And just keep looking for the opportunities and, and, and push those doors down. Um, equally, look at things like the School of Marketing I mentioned. Look at the Marketing Academy and go, are, are there opportunities with some of those schemes, depending on background experience, you could also get into? Um, so, yeah, don't let it be a deterrent and, and seek out every opportunity you can find. But as I say, LinkedIn is a brilliant way to do that now. Yeah, I completely agree with B. I mean, I think, uh, you know, now you can you can talk to a range of different people through LinkedIn. I mean, you know, and I think also, you know, myself, Pete, other people uh, who've been in the industry a while also are very keen to help people get into the industry. So I think you'd be surprised if you approach people how willing they would be to help, uh, you know, get you get into the industry or to open up opportunities. But I, I completely agree with Pete. I think if you've got the will, uh, and you've got the desire to do it. It's not a requirement for you to have done a marketing degree or something similar to get into the space. So, um, yeah, I think if if you want it and you want to get after it, then it shouldn't be prohibitory at all. Yeah, that's great to know. Thanks. So, speaking of you know starting an apprenticeship or maybe just coming out of university, what would you say an entry level job looks like in marketing? So it can vary quite a lot, actually. I think. Yeah. Oh, you can't. So, it, so if yeah. you look at my team, it, it again, it depends on where you're passionate about. Because equally, you might want to go and work in an agency. You might go actually, I want to do account management or creative or media planning or buying. So, I think um, it it depends on that. It could be you want to get into market research. It could be you're massively into data and you want to work in data analytics, 
all of those are great marketing disciplines. So have a think about where you'd want to place yourself on that scale of you know, more creative, more data led, um, customer experience led and where you want to play there. Um, that's, I think, is, is, is a really good place to start. And then an entry level job tends to be more of a like a marketing assistant, but it could be a data analyst. It could be a junior planner. It could be any one of those things. So you could find yourself running marketing effectiveness reviews. You could find yourself running a research program. You could find yourself running some uh, media activity, some of the activity Ollie's described. Or you could find yourself running some uh, regionalized or, or specific marketing campaigns. So I, I think to answer, I would, I would say have a look at marketing and its pure, absolute breadth and depth and go, where where would I, as that person, want to be? And and um, and what level of experience I want to get into? None of those ways in are wrong. But I think the bit, come back to Ollie's point, is find the thing you're passionate about. If you love data, get into data. If you love planning, go and plan. If you love creative, find a way into creative. So there's so many different ways in, Ollie, aren't there? Even more so now than ever. Yeah, I definitely agree with Pete. I mean, I think find that thing that you really love to do, whatever it is, the element. And maybe also talk to some people who are already in the industry. Um, to yeah. find out what area is that you've got interest in. I think to Pete's point, you know, the opportunities now at that kind of entry level are so broad. And I would I would say actually be very open, you know. So, I mean, I set up in-house, say, programmatic planning and buying teams. We took a range of really great people who came in to start just basically building campaign activity for us, um, but then found they loved certain elements of media, went on to do strategy, went on to do buying. So I think, you know, the, the, the opportunities there... Um, just probably find out that part that you really love to do and then once you start doing it does that really interest you and or are, as you start to be exposed to more elements how do you want to then maybe be a bit more specialized or or more generalized depending on what yes. yeah. depending on what you want to do thank you now for people who are maybe haven't had any experience they haven't done any work experience or anything so they're not quite sure what route they want to go down as you were saying to get experience in different places is useful but what what advice would you give to someone who isn't sure what route to go down firstly um what kind of advice could you give to them to choose which route to go down oh, you know, to start from my side, yeah so i mean i, I would say I would go back to what I was saying before. I think go and talk to some people in the industry and, and start to understand what it is that that role actually involves doing. Um, you know, I think for myself, I'm very honest, I never really knew what I wanted to do when I first came out of university. I mean, I had always knew that I wanted to be in retail. My dad was in retail, so I thought it sounds like a good idea. I should probably do that. So I think, you know, I, I started in the stores group and then, you know, did that for a few years. I kind of found, I learned so much from that. So I think... Um, my only other thing I'd say is don't think too much about what the end destination that you would like to be. Um, maybe think about some of the elements that you enjoy doing, get into it, have an opportunity to do it, and then go from there. But I would definitely start by talking to some people who are doing that in the industry. Find out if that sounds of interest. He's also listening to, to people. I mean, there's so much available now, podcasts available yes. from talking about what they do in the industry. Um, so it gives you an idea of whether or not that, that interests you. And I think if you start down that road and you, you enjoy it, it's one of those things that kind of draws you in, really. You can't, I mean, I'm a bit now, like I, when I look back at my career, I was thinking, well, I never thought I'd, I'd be where I am now, but it's a bit of lots from where I start. But I don't know. I don't know what no, I, I think that's really helpful, Ollie. I think, again, coming back to LinkedIn is, I think you can you know, have a look for, even if you search people's job titles, you can follow people on, on LinkedIn. Um, and actually, it, it's... Um, you know, you, and you can see what they're talking about, what articles they're, 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 they're promoting. Have a look at the campaign website, Campaign Live. Have a look at the Marketing Week website, the Festival of Marketing on YouTube, the Drum, all worth following. And you'll, you'll get to see what some um, uh, amazing, um, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, amazing work is and whether you, you want to do that. I would say, though, I, I think trust your gut a little bit on this stuff. Mm -hmm. So, look, if you don't, you know, if spreadsheets excite you, then then maybe you like data. If spreadsheets don't and you get really switched on by creative, if out, if in your social life you're the person people come to that always plans a night out, maybe you're pretty good at planning. So there's bits already you'll find your DNA. So it's not about – so look, I was not a natural analyst. So I, I was an analyst for a year in that job, and I enjoyed it, but I knew that I didn't want to be reporting on a marketing effectiveness of campaigns for that long. So I jumped at the first opportunity I could – to get into managing and planning campaigns. And I absolutely loved it. I just knew that spending my life in analyzing data and spreadsheets just wasn't me. 
but that's not wrong. There are people for whom it's amazing. And those people are chief data officers today who are doing amazing jobs. I'm just thinking about a former colleague who's now running data for Lego. He's mm. exactly that person. Blumin loves it. And those jobs come on big money now. If you're into data, that's the gold. That's the gold rush in marketing at the moment, data analytics, um, which sadly Ollie and I don't work in. But no, it's, 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 it's amazing. Um, and uh, and you, can, you can sort of be quite commanding in the roles you get. Hence, he's ended up at Blumin Lego, which is fantastic. Um, so I think, yeah, worth having a good look at yourself and where you get your energy from and mm. the sorts of things you like doing, because it's actually a really good guide for the sorts of roles you could go into. Um, so yeah, it's good. have a look, good look in the mirror and go, what do I like? And that's not a bad guide. Yeah, I think it's um, important to remember, you know, that this is a career for life. So mm. it's okay to make yeah. mistakes at the beginning. You're only 18, 21, whatever age mm. you're starting at. You know, as you've said, Pete, you don't always find it straight away. Sometimes you have to get a job just to get into the industry and then you can find your path from there. Yeah, and I think that's, I mean, one of the things one of my old mentors used to say is, you know, your career is never done. It's kind of evolving. So, I mean, I kind of, I mean, even if I look at my own career now, I, I mean, I'm 41. I've done probably 20 years of my career. I mean, I hope I've got probably another 20 plus years to go. So, you know, there's an evolution that goes on through it. So I think also that's the other thing is just be patient with yourself. Don't feel like you have yes. to be in a certain place at a certain time. You know, having that journey and that enjoyment is probably something I, realized a bit later into my career was part of what I really loved um you know so being having the chance to go abroad having the chance to meet different people that was all part of the excitement versus where was I what was I doing so I think almost as long as you enjoy it and you love what you're doing that's that's the biggest thing when you spend a significant amount of time in work so if you love what you do and you enjoy it I think that gives you that longevity but also you know you don't need to solve everything on the first day it's it's it is a, it, you have time to do that Yes. Yeah, definitely. Um, the next question is basically asking, what does someone need to do if they wanted to get some work experience at Boots in marketing? Um, yeah, I mean, not not against it. I guess, I guess to check the challenges, if 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 everyone asks, then we won't be able to accommodate everyone. Um, we haven't um, j just because of the pandemic and not being in the office. It's been quite hard to do it, and we're not yet in a pattern of. I mean, Ollie can, I mean, Ollie, I happen to be in London, Ollie's at home today, but equally Ollie could have been in Nottingham today because we were together a few days ago and I was in Nottingham as well. So we're not yet in, in a, an established pattern, which has made work experience quite hard. So we haven't, we haven't turned, in fact, we haven't had a lot of people asking for it, but we mm. wouldn't have rushed into it over recent months simply because what I also wouldn't want is for someone to literally sit on a phone call thinking I'm adding no value here. I think the best work experience is the one where we can give someone a project or something to work on where they feel like they've achieved something, even if it's just in a week where you've achieved a bit of work. Um, and then, then, you, then you, you haven't just I, – I, so I remember some of the work experiences I did, all right? They're freaking awful. I remember I did the photocopy and made the teas, and I, and I sat in meetings that no one explained to me, and, and I, I actually once fell asleep. I had to wake myself up when I was working for a work experience for one of the railway companies in Croydon, a really boring town planning meeting, thinking, please will the world swallow me up. And I think it was about 17 at the time. Um, and thankfully, someone jolted me to awake, but it was not a very interesting meeting. And I just wouldn't want to give someone experience where you go. We've well, had a work experience of Boots, but you've learned nothing. You've sat on calls where we filled you full of jargon. And you think, what the heck was that? And you don't feel you've achieved anything in the week. So... I think I think we've got to get our act together a bit more in the context of as we evolve into hybrid working, um, how can we find a way to get people in to do it? But I'd like to do it in a way that that, it, that gives people a proper work experience rather than just you've sat in the shadow. I mean, shadowing is a bit rubbish. Come, means come and sit on a call while we, we hear us chatter about stuff you don't we don't explain to you is not helpful. So how would you go about it? I think, um, I guess, our, uh, allow us a bit more time to get organised in the rhythm of how we're working. Um, and I'm not against people reaching out, but I suggest you know, do, do it in the new year to the point where we're more in the rhythm. Uh, and also right now, we are so knee deep in Christmas. Um, Ollie and I are literally living and breathing. So most of you on the call, quite rightly, when you've been thinking about Christmas, unless you're very organised, in which case become a planner. Um, um, we are living Christmas right now. Our ad launches within the next two weeks um, and already our activities live promoting gifting. And we are living and breathing everything from number seven advent calendars to all sorts of stuff at the moment. So uh, now is now is not the easiest time to engage with Boots. Um, but come January, um, we'll come out the other side of Christmas, hopefully um, uh, celebrating 
with everyone else and then it'll be a good time and then at that point i think we'll be in more of an organized rhythm around how we're working and then we can reopen the topic yeah Thanks, Pete. I'm sure that's really useful for them to know. Um, so anyone watching, if you do want some work experience, maybe save it till after Christmas, because it sounds like you two are very busy, which I'm not surprised about. Um, any kind of retail industry must be super busy over the Christmas period. But I actually can't wait to see the Christmas advert. I feel like it's a bit of a competition at the moment over the last few years oh, for, um, who can do the best Christmas advert. Yes, yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. And we're, we're, we're super excited as well. I've just had the research back pre-testing before we go live, which has shown the strength of what we're going out with. So look, I, I hope all of you, when you see it, love it as much as the research is saying. But we're, we're really excited. And, and Ollie's done some amazing work on the planning around the launch. So yeah, watch this space. So I'm just going to ask you one more question before we finish, as we are unfortunately running out of time. But what is your favourite part of working for Boots? Um, I think that the, the bit... This is back to, I'll take all these words about something you're passionate about is join a company that, that, that you, you care about what it does. And look, I've worked in banking and I, th I genuinely believe you can care about what a bank does. You know, businesses, businesses inherently, in my view, at their core are, are trying to do good things for customers and for shareholders and team members, and employees. But find, I think for me, find a job find in a business that you care about what their mission is and what they do. Look at their values, look at the culture and go, you know, that's me. I'm aligned with that. And, I, and I, look, I've worked in businesses. I, I, I found Aviva quite hard. Aviva culturally didn't didn't fit with me. But but Boots is is like a hand and glove. And Ollie's felt the same, I know. And, and, um, so that Boots is a purpose-led business founded, as I said, 170 years ago because Jesse Boot, who founded Boots, basically people couldn't afford soap. Unless you were rich, you couldn't afford soap. You couldn't afford razor blades. You know, and sadly, you know, that was a real issue back then. So sadly, it's a bit of an issue now still for, for some families, a real difficulty. And so Boots was founded to make healthcare and medicine, everything affordable to everyone. So that mission's continued. We work now with Macmillan on cancer support. We work with a hygiene bank, helping families in real need have access to the, those hygiene products, in shower gel, um, razors, deodorants, everything today that affects particularly kids in school who turn up in school without access to those products. That's a real issue. And we work with the Prince's Trust to get young people in, more young people into work. So on top of and as part of the work Ollie and I do, we work in a business that genuinely cares and genuinely puts its purpose front and centre. So what I love working for Boots is I work with amazing people at Ollie. I've got a brilliant, the best team I've ever had in marketing, amazing group of people. Um, and we get to do work we're really proud of, but we get to make a real difference every day. So we're not just, you know, selling the next perfume or the next beauty launch. Yeah, we're doing that because it matters. And we care about it passionately. And and as well as that, we're also making a difference, I hope, in society and the world at large. And so you can go home in the evening going, look, we're, we're hopefully overall making a positive difference. So my encouragement would be find a brand that, that you feel the same about. And, and as I say, look, that doesn't have to be a brand on paper you think is sexy. You know, I've worked in insurance. You could go, well, how's insurance making? Insurance makes a massive difference. If you look at communities that flood, the difference you make to put people's lives back to normal is enormous. People that go through a car crash, if your house is burgled and flooded, the difference you make in someone's life is enormous. So don't always, it's not always the most obvious thing. You can find businesses that have real purpose and real heart that maybe aren't always the most obvious. Um, and equally, you know, the temptation I had a few years ago was to chase after God, you know, I'm only going to make it if I work for Facebook or Google or Amazon or Apple. Yeah. Amazing brands. If you get to work for them, congratulations. They're amazing. But you can equally learn something working for, you know, Swinton Insurance, Direct Line, Compare the Market, Confuse, Go Compare, um, you know, Santander Bank. You know, there are amazing businesses out there that, that, that you may not think are the sexiest thing on your CV, but you can make a real difference. And so, yeah, find that place that makes a difference that excites you as much as Boots does to Ollie and I. Thanks so much. Ollie, do you have anything to add about no, the I, part of Boots? Completely agree with Pete. I mean, I think for me, the, the thing that attracts me to Boots is the culture. I mean, as, as Pete says, I think that's something you can't underplay. I think, you know, uh, there's a lot of places that, you know, as Pete said, would be really, people would say, oh, that's exactly the place I'd want to work. I think for me, the biggest thing and what drew me to Boots is it has that. It really was something I'd always wanted to go to. It's a great brand, but also the culture is brilliant. You know, there's, there's that collaboration where people want to be successful together. And I think that in a business is just such a strength because you have that 
ability to drive transformation when you know that the person standing next to you wants it just as much as you do. Um, so I think if you've got that and you've got that culture uh, and you've got great people around you to work with and learn from, um, that for me is, uh, I think that's that's the reason why I, I mean I come here and, and totally agree with Pete. I think you know what we feel it's like we're doing now is making a real difference into some of the activities we're doing. Um, you know, and, and also the people are brilliant. I mean, I'm very lucky about a great team that I work that works for me. And, you know, that is for me is enormously enthusing. So, yeah, I think if you if you feel that energy about where you are and you know you're in the right place uh, and you feel that, you know, the culture is you fit with the people, that's when the, the best work you'll deliver because you'll you'll be get, you'll be all going after the same thing. So, yeah, no, but it's mm -hmm. a great place to work. I mean, your passion shines through both of you. I can tell that you are obviously so passionate about your jobs and you love your jobs because it's so obvious. People can't stop talking about it when they enjoy themselves. And I think that's so important in a job. So thank you for sharing your passion with us today.